wonder where he could be. I've been all across the universe by now. Out to Pluto, up over the Milky Way, all around Alpha Centauri, even behind Halley's Comet. I can't imagine where he could be. He's not in any of his usual places, looking after his important business, but being the head angel and all. Oh, but I gotta find him soon. My teacher won't be at all pleased. Oh. This Archangel training program is harder than I thought. Oh. I was specifically told to find Gabriel and get him to explain to me about humanity, whatever that is. It seems that the Almighty One has a particular fondness for them, even though they have no idea they live in our realm. I've heard of stories of God talking with them, and even being and talking with them. Oh, that just seems too hard to believe. Oh, but I gotta find him soon, or I'll never understand. Gabriel! Gabriel! Hey, Taryn? Oh, Gabriel, is that you? Taryn, I've been waiting for you. You gotta come up and watch this. Come on, oh. quick. down here. Please, put them on and get ready. Okay. Angels, Colin, Tyson, remember to smile. Colin, don't trip on the stairs. Bryce, it's only fun until someone loses an eye. Please, put it back and you can get it out when it's your turn. <laughs> Brett, start acting like Joseph and quit bothering the girls. Mr. Friesen better give me a raise next year. Shepherds, start acting more afraid and quit giggling. Okay, okay. Wait a second, Wiseman. Wiseman! What are you doing? Those costumes are from last year. Come and put them back and put on the Wiseman costumes. I'll be so glad when this is over. Okay, choir, let's squeeze together just a little bit. Perfect. Okay, remember, sing, sing, sing out and smile. It's angels we have heard on high. Positions, everyone.
Good job. Well done, guys. Well done. You can put your signs down. OK, Brad, you can put your sign down, too. Tomorrow is our very last rehearsal. And then the next night, we're going to do it for all the parents. So please, remember, go straight home, because it's getting late. Boys, are you listening? This is very important. So please, be here tomorrow, 4 o'clock. Have a good evening. about you mean you don't know well I figured it was about Christmas at least that's what they called it well yes it is about Christmas a most important celebration in the history of all of mankind is that why you're here Gabriel well sort of you see I'm so busy with the rest of the cosmos that I rarely have time to come back down to earth anymore <laughs> but every Christmas I make the time to come down and, and to ponder it all again I love to see the light in their eyes when, when they first believe and realize that they're all a part of our eternal realm too. Though God has a much different plan for them than he has for us. Okay, what exactly do you mean by that? Because I heard that from my instructor too. He said that I should find you and that you could help me understand that it was buried in the history of the world and no one would be better able to explain it to me than you. Why? Were you there? Is it true you appeared to people? True, why yes, of course. And I wasn't the only one. But let's talk about that later and watch what's going on below. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. For I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Dad, do you believe in angels? Angels? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Have you ever seen one? <laughs> no, no, I haven't been quite that lucky. Have you? I don't know. What do they look like? Oh, man. I really don't know. But I do know it's time for you to go to sleep, so... Are sure. you sure you don't know? I wish I could, because sometimes... Well, I don't know. I mean, it sounds so neat. Like, better than the movies. Are they still around today? Could I have seen an angel? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. God says they're everywhere. They're all around us. They watch over us and kind of take care of us. But... We just can't see them. It's time for you to go to sleep. No more questions. Okay, you have a good sleep. Okay, love you. Wow. They really want to know about us and our realm, don't they? Well, most of them do. But it's not as easy for them as it is for us. You see, God only opens windows to our realm for brief moments, and then it's only at special and specific occasions. And yet some of them still choose not to believe because they don't understand. Gabriel, that's it! That's, that's why I'm supposed to talk to you. You were involved in this whole Christmas thing, weren't you? Oh, well, yes, I Can was. Can you tell me about it? Well, yes. Oh, all about it, and the okay, people will, involved. Yes. What was Here, it like? Yeah, I will. You, oh, what was it like when they first believed? Can you tell me now? Taryn, yes, I can. But to tell you everything would take an eternity. How about I start with my part? You see, the time had finally come, and it surprised us. 
not because it was finally going to happen. We've been expecting that for as long as I could remember. But the exact timing, now that was a well-kept secret. You see, the announcement trip was made on a moment's notice. Timing was everything. We took our trip, found the people, made our appearance, and with my eyes filling with tears, I flew to the front and shouted, Fear not, for I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior is born to you, who is Christ the Lord. they were told to find their king. Now, I'm not sure how familiar you are with this story, so I don't know if you'll know the next couple I'm going to tell you about. Who is that? Well, I'm going to tell you about the innkeeper and his wife, Lydia. Now, see, they owned a stable and a hotel in Bethlehem. What are you thinking about? The prophet Micah and what he said about the Messiah. Things here have become so unbearable. He has to come soon. Tell me again what Micah said about Bethlehem. More prophecy? Listen, what you need to know about scriptures, I will tell you. But I'm fascinated. Micah said, but you, Bethlehem, 
Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one for me who will be ruler over Israel. You can stop right there. It doesn't mean the Messiah. Not in this forgotten town. How do you remember these things anyways? I'm beginning to believe that the Messiah will be born in this generation and in Bethlehem. Lydia, Lydia, what generation hasn't thought that the Messiah would be born to them? Even if he is, why would God tell you? That would be just like him. Send the Messiah and tell only a few women. Or maybe some shepherds while he's at it. This is different. Israel is living under Caesar's thumb. There's soldiers out on every street corner. There's got to be a hope for us. Shh, Lydia, don't speak about the Romans that way. Why? Are you afraid that they're listening? Yes. They're too busy with their census, making sure we can pay more taxes. I'm certain. Have you noticed that bright star outside? I don't believe I've ever seen it before. What? There are thousands of stars. I know, but look at this star. It's as bright as the moon. <sighs> ah. Never mind. Well, at least the census hasn't hurt our money situation. The place is full. <laughs> I even sold a night in the stable to some couple. <laughs> the pregnant couple? You sent them to sleep in the stable? What were you thinking? She had to have been in her eighth or ninth month and was obviously suffering from birth pains. You've got to be smarter than that. But smarts had nothing to do with it. It was all part of God's plan. will this child have? With the way the world is now, that child's only hope is in the Messiah.
children of Bethlehem cry. <laughs> So, are you still with me? I think so. Good, because I have a lot more to tell you about this. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, now, you've heard of the wise men who came to Bethlehem from the east, right? No. Mm. Well, how about I tell you about them? Okay, you see, there was three of them. But I'm going to tell you about one named Malchazar. You see... Malchazar was a teacher, and a very educated man, who people depended on. When a king had a problem, he turned to Malchazar for an answer, because he was supposed to know when things would happen. But he had been studying the charts and the scrolls and the scriptures, and this event was different. He couldn't quite get a grasp on it. can't make sense of this. The books are clearly saying in the land of Judah. But how will we know? Uh. What? No. That can't be. No. It is. It has to be. That's it. That's it. I got to tell the others. Uh, Cayman. Cyrus. Cyrus, wake up. Cyrus, wake up. Come here. Malkazar? I found something, Cyrus. Found what? I found something big. Big, eh? Cyrus, it's a star. A star? Like last week? No, no, last week was Haley's Comet, but this one's different. Uh, what's so different about this one? Uh, just go get Cayman. Come here and I'll show you. Get Cayman. Come on. Get him. Uh, hurry up. Get Cayman. Now he's always working so hard at night. I can't even sleep. Another star. Yes, another star. Oh, why can't he work in the day? Just, it's oh, important. This better be important. Oh. Hurry. This is the fourth time this week. This time it's big. It's important. <clears throat> Bigger than usual. As, hurry. I'm coming. Hey, Ben Cyrus, <coughs> come on. What? Come on up. You're not going to believe this. I can hardly believe it. Come on, but just... Well, what is it? Okay. Okay. Uh, check out the charts, okay? Right. Uh -huh. The charts. Okay. And then check out the text. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, the text. And then check out the star. It's the, it's the star! star! It's the star that the prophets wrote about. Quick, get our things. We'll leave it first light. All right. Okay. It's the star! It's the star! You see, a star had been hung in the sky by the Father. That was a sign that Malchazar and the others had been looking for. A star? But there are thousands of stars. What's so special about this one? And what's with those three guys? Why are they so important? Well, you see, wise men held a very unique position in society. Their job was to teach and to train kings. So as a part of that, they would study science, scriptures, and literature, and gain from that all the truth and all the knowledge that they could. And then they'd pass that on to the kings, who would hopefully, in turn, rule with wisdom. Well, that makes sense. Now, you see, God had allowed the wise men to understand that the Messiah would be born in Judea. But just when and where, they weren't quite sure. So the star, it led them to Jerusalem, and unfortunately, to the ruthless King Herod. Why do you call him ruthless? Was he bad? Well, you see, this birth could mean a rival for the king. Oh. Quite an impressive entourage, Malchazar. How many are you? More than 150 people, Your Excellency. Remarkable. So what is it that brings you here? Uh, we were told that a child was to be born here in Judea, well, under Roman rule. But what makes this child so unique, Your Majesty, is that he was announced in your scriptures as one who would become king and that this child is the son of the living God. King. <laughs> Amazing. So you come to worship this baby? Yes, Your Excellency. But you don't know when or where in Judea he is to be born. No, we don't. Uh, but the star first appeared to us more than 18 months ago. Well, you, teachers and priests, you must know he is to be your king. Where do your scriptures say he is to be born? The scriptures? The scriptures say that he is to be born in Bethlehem, your, your majesty. Then go, my lords. Unto Bethlehem and search for him with my blessing. And when you find him, return here and tell me where I may find him so that I can worship him also. Herod told them that he wanted to worship him also. Ha! Kill him is what he meant. He wanted the wise men to tell him where to find the child so that he could have him killed. Oh, he was ruthless. Another king. Will this one be a true king or another Herod? A true king would really change the plight of his people. He would wake up every day with their well-being and not his throne on his mind. Maybe one day there'll be someone who will share his wealth with his people. 
I'm sure that'll happen. But where is the one who will care as much, or maybe even as more, for his kingdom, for his people, than for himself? He would be king, a true king. He would rule in truth and wisdom. He would reign in peace and love and tender mercy. With a heart that's filled with kindness and a soul that overflows with his forgiveness. He would break the chains of bondage. He would set the captive free. With a heart of love, he'd reign. Well, Terry, in the months that it took for the wise men to find the Christ child, Jesus had already grown to be a, a toddler. And his mother, Mary, she had told her entire story to Lydia, my visits and all. And Lydia, she began to wonder less and to believe more. And that's not an easy thing to do when you're helping to change the diapers of the very child you believe to be the son of God. Now. When the wise men entered Bethlehem, it was a huge event in the city. Can you imagine? Over 150 people all crowding into a city, all together, trying to find places to stay and things to do. But again, God made preparations his own way. While Malchazar was looking for Jesus and inquiring about him, 
he happened to meet up with Lydia. Yes, I am one of Mary's friends. I was here to help right after the baby was born. So I've grown close to both Mary and Joseph. And Mary has told me so many remarkable things. She said that an angel came to visit her and said that she would be with child and she was to name him Jesus. <laughs> and he will be great and will be called the son of the most high God. And you believe this? Yes, I believe this. So the people do not realize that he is to become their king? No, they don't realize that he's to become king. And even more, they don't realize that he is the Messiah. Messiah? Savior? God? Do you know what you're saying? I know the scriptures better than you. But this child, you're calling this child the son of your God, and you believe this? With all my heart. Talk to Mary, talk to Joseph. An angel visited them, and he said that Jesus is the Holy One, the Son of God. Okay, I can grant you that he is certainly a king, but... No, he is more than just a king. You're Messiah, and you believe this. Yes, our Messiah, our God, but our hope. He is just a child, born here in... Yes, Bethlehem. Born into Bethlehem, as prophesied. Into the family of David, as prophesied. No, he is not just a child. He was born for us. He was born to save us. He is our hope. Blessed morn, our hope was born in a humble cattle stall. Shepherds gathered round to see this greatest gift of all, the Father's gift of love to that's new and that this little king would eternally bring his life to me and you you were born to bring us hope you were born to bring us love Oh. 
about Lydia and the inn and Malchazar and Herod. But what about those shepherds? What happened to them? Oh, right. How could I forget about the shepherds? Well, you see, I'm going to tell you about them now, I guess, because I have to. They were the first ones to see Jesus. And they were the first ones told. They were told to find Mary, Joseph, and the baby in the stable. But the real question was, would they go? And would they spread the news, as was planned? Well, did they go? They sure did. And in the middle of the night, when Mary and Joseph should have been asleep, this rowdy bunch of shepherds burst into town, screaming and shouting and making noise. What a sight that was. You should have seen it. Well, where did they go? What did they do? Well, they were so excited that they ran all the way from the fields, flooding into the streets of Bethlehem, praising God, shouting and screaming. Everyone thought that they were drunk, especially when they told Mary that a bunch of angels had told them where to find the Messiah. But they were serious. And what they told Mary confirmed what I had already spoken. And they became the first to declare the birth of Jesus. And they went from the stable, praising God, saying, the new Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, our God is with us.
Hold it! You mean to tell me that Jesus was born in a stable? Yes. A stable? Yes. Gabriel, that's where they keep sheep. Right. Oh. Okay. Jesus, our Lord, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the King of Kings, was born in a barn? Yes, to Mary and Joseph. Oh. And after Jesus was born, they stayed in Bethlehem for a while. There we go. Are you okay? I'm just a little tired. I'm not sure what to make of all of this. Joseph, you do believe me, don't you? Of course I do. But wait a minute, Shh. If this is God's way, then all will be well. But why did the Father choose us? He could have chosen a rich family. The Pharisee. And why did he bring us here? I wonder too. But these are God's ways, not ours. Mary, I don't always understand his decisions, sometimes at all. But if this is his way, then... I know. Then all should be well? Then all will be well. God's ways are not our ways. His plans are not our plans if we will just be faithful someday we'll understand God's ways are not our So that's how it happened. Exactly. But let's get back to the wise men. 
You see, Malchazar was having a very hard time accepting that this child really was the Messiah. This woman, Lydia, her story seems unbelievable, literally. But if she is telling the truth, Jesus' mother and father really were visited by an angel. Wait, wouldn't that make him who the scriptures say he is? The son of the creator of the universe? The one and only true God? In a child? No, not a chance. Remember their scriptures. He is to be born of a virgin, as Lydia said. He is part of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and David, as predicted. Born in Bethlehem, also as predicted. Well, certainly he fulfills many of their predictions. He may well indeed be their king, but a messiah? How does this king become a messiah? It's in the other predictions that he becomes messiah. Oh. Ones you and I know full well. Cyrus, this king is to die at the hands of his own people. It's not in his birth, but in his death that he is to be known. Questioned wisdom, asking what is truth, searching scriptures written by your hand. This star has brought me to this moment, and now I must choose to believe in something I don't understand. How could this be a king born in a maze? How could he make a kingdom last forever? The wonder of his birth, why would he come to earth? The prophets say he is to die, why would he leave his throne on high? My heart cries out, is this redemption story? A humble manger to the king of glory. Wonder of his birth, why would he come to earth? Why would he come to die? This Jesus. Wait, remember what the prophet Isaiah wrote? Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So, he is to uh, die to save his people? The star that brought us here, the fulfilled prophecies, this is more than just their king. This is their Messiah, the Son of God. And this king, this child, this toddler is my Lord, my one true king, one who will in time die for me. This king, like no other, is worthy of worship. I stand in awe of love so great, I lift my voice to celebrate the Father's gift of love, redemption story. The Father's song of joy, the King of glory. The wonder of his birth, the hope for all the earth. He came to give me life, this Jesus. 
is Jesus. He is the Father's gift of love. How can I tell the others that this child we've come to honor is, is actually God, the creator of all things? What kind of gift can I bring to someone who already has everything. What did they give him, Gabriel? They brought him some of the most precious things in the world. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But Malchazar, he brought him something far better. What was that? Well, the others all brought things that they could give. Malchazar, he gave this baby everything. He gave him himself and his life.
What have I just witnessed? My whole life I've waited, and now I found it. There he was, this little child, God, right in front of my eyes. This little child, he is heir to the throne. I'm so inadequate in giving him my gift. Why would he need it if he was king? The only thing I can truly give him is myself. And so that's how Malchazar came to understand just what the birth of Jesus meant for all of mankind. That Jesus wants them to come to him and to give themselves to him. So that was his gift to him, himself. His heart and his life? Exactly. Okay, I understand, but wait. What about the wise men? Weren't they supposed to go tack back to Herod and tell him about Jesus? Well, that's right. So I appeared to them in a dream, and I told them that Herod wasn't interested in anything but protecting his own precious throne. So they took a different route around Jerusalem. Bethlehem as quickly as they had come. But because of what I had told them in the dream, they didn't go back the same direction they had come in. All of them looked terrified, except for Malchazar, who before they left, met with Lydia again. What's this? This is for you. It's perfume, and thanks for helping me for showing me this child. Jesus gave me my life. I had always searched for truth, and I thought I knew what it was. But I was wrong. My life is forever changed because of Jesus, the Father's gift of love. Stand. 
Didn't you say that there's some people that, that don't believe in us, or don't want to believe in us, or even in God, who loves them so much and would do all this for them? Well, yes. Unfortunately, that's true. Is that why the Almighty One looks so sad sometimes? Yes. But there's great rejoicing when one believes for the first time. And that's what God longs for. And that's why he sent Jesus that very first Christmas.
That song asks some interesting questions, doesn't it? Two of the last four of them intrigue me. Could it be that I, like Mary, could hold him in my arms? And could he reach through time and hold me too? The reason why these two questions intrigue me is because they presume that Jesus is close. And yet, just a glance around our world shows that to emphatically not the case. If you watch the news like I do, you flipped it on last night and you saw the Russians continually beating the tar out of a weaker nation. 
How could Jesus be there? Maybe you're scared to turn on the television for fear that you'll see another schoolboy who decided that he was going to kill his classmates out of anger or some other reason. For that matter, maybe you just look down the lane and you see your neighbors who, whose farm has been in the family and in their hands for centuries or for generations at least. Now they're in the hands of the bank. How could Jesus be in that? Maybe we don't even have to look at the larger world. Maybe you can look at your own personal world, at the relational stress fractures that are going on in these relationships that you are trying to hold together that seem to want to split, the financial pressure. How am I going to pay my bills? Where am I going to find the money for next semester? What kind of things can I swing with the banker to stay on the farm just one more year. Even the struggle to juggle all of the responsibilities and things that we need to do, Jesus just doesn't seem to be there. Maybe you realize that you have a job that when you started it had this potential for promotion and happiness and now there's that aching unhappiness in the back that you need to do all kinds of things to bury and Jesus just doesn't seem to be there. So how can we sing with any degree of confidence and could it be that he could reach through time and hold me to as if he's close? Luke's gospel tells us that when Jesus was born, his mother Mary took him and wrapped him in cloths and put him in a manger in the middle of a barn. Amidst the sweet breath and steamy dung of beasts, the Son of God was born. If you were to look around that barn, you would see the large, roomy eyes of cattle looking on, sheep laying against the side of the wall, see a mouse scurrying deeper into the hay just to try to stay warm, that smell of root cellar and fresh manure. And the Son of God was born into that, which gives me great hope. Because if we can find the Son of God in the middle of a manger in a barn, then it means that there is no place so lowly and earthbound that he cannot also be found, including our world and your life. Folks, Jesus is closer to you than you can possibly imagine. And he wants to be. This was a choice. He forsook heaven for earth and mansions for a manger in the presence of the Father for the company of barn animals just to get close. And when you realize what he gave up and how far he came, you also realize that there are no lengths to which Jesus will not go to get close to you. Jesus is nearer to you than you may realize. Could it be that I, like Mary, could hold him in my arms Probably not. But could he reach with nail-scarred hands and hold me too? In some mystical way, yes. Because Jesus is closer to you than you realize. If you're in the main sanctuary in front of you, there are comment cards. You can't see them, but they're there. On the wings, they'll be handed to you. On the front of those cards, there are some comments that can help us pull this thing off even better next year. And we need your help with this. There will be folks standing at the back with boxes. All it'll do is take you one second to fill this thing out and drop it in. If you've enjoyed the show, you can do that for us. On the back, there's an optional section. That allows us to give you something. Maybe you have a prayer request in your life that you just need somebody to pray for with you. If you check that box, we will do that. Maybe as you search your own life, you realize that you really don't know what it means to be a Christian. You've got notions and ideas, but in your heart of hearts, you know it's not true. And you want to know how to have that relationship 
with a Jesus who wants to be close. Maybe you are a Christian tonight and you just don't know where he is in your life anymore. But you want to. You can check that box and we'll get in touch with you. We want to be able to help you to see who and where Jesus is in your lives tonight. If you fill that out, we'll do that for you. The house lights are going to come up to help you do that. There's going to be some music. Please fill in those cards. Whether you fill in the optional section or not is your choice, but please fill in the rest. When they are done, there's going to be one more piece before we are through. Thank you. Folks, before you go tonight, there are a number of people that we have to thank who went way over and above what you can possibly imagine as far as hours and commitment goes. In charge of all of the music is Mr. Ken Dosso. And the fellow in charge of all of the drama is Mr. Neil Downey. And we should also thank Media Productions who put all the lights and sound together, the choir and the orchestra as well before we go. <laughs> Folks, we hope that we've offered a little focus and hope to your Christmas season and we want you to go with the grace of Jesus whose birth we celebrated tonight and want to thank you for coming and have a good evening.